Um, I'm going to get out of the way. I've yammered long enough. I'm going to go make some t-shirts. Please don't come back there. Watch Scott because Scott has got some of the coolest stuff on the planet sitting on this table. So Scott Moulton, one of the uh, guys that helps us put this on. Can I have a round of applause? Thanks, Scott. All right, and uh, real quick, to uh, Freeside tomorrow night has an open house at 5 o'clock. So anybody after the con tomorrow or something that uh, wants to swing by Freeside, they got open house, so you can go see everything they got and what's going on. Um, all right, I'm Scott Moulton. Uh, I do data recovery for a living primarily. I do a lot of forensics work, uh, a lot of forensics work on dead hard drives as well, so it's kind of a combination thing. But I run a, a site that's called MyHardDriveDied.com, and I've been running a data recovery company now for this is this will be its 11th year that we've been starting to to uh, deal with data recoveries. And I deal with the physical stuff. I deal mostly with the stuff that's really bad. Somebody, you know, a head hits a platter, or somebody threw a drive on the ground, or something like that. I tend to get the worst of the worst, and probably because I tend to ask for it. It seems to be. Uh, you keep doing talks like this. I mean, this is my sixth or seventh year doing talks on how to do your own data recovery. And so I've got 50, 60, 70 hours of movie out there I've given away. But I also teach a class uh, to a lot of three-letter agencies and things like that that's uh, open to the public on certain events. I have a schedule up on myharddrivedive.com, and I basically go around and rent hotels at different cities throughout the U.S. And then we have a class that has about uh, 10 to 15 people where we actually go through the process of doing all the physical recovery, rebuild, and it's about a 60-hour class that we do in five days. So uh, we actually live in the hotel, basically, and run the whole thing. So if you guys are interested in the stuff I do, then go look at that later and uh, sign up for a class or something. I have an Atlanta class like in July, June or July. Um, next month it'll be in D.C. So, uh, so keep track of that. But um, I'm not going to fill you with any fluff or anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically do the real meat and potatoes. Now, this is because Atlanta's my hometown here. Um, this is one of the only cons that I'm actually going to do, like, real live demo. I brought a whole bunch of hardware, and I've set it up, mainly because in the last 30 days, there's been a, a new release of some software. There's a new process where basically now people are starting to try to focus on integrating the logical recovery with the physical recovery. And for anybody do forensics, how many people doing forensics? How many people make images like DD or FTK or does anything to make images of hard drives? So you guys know at this point that when you've been doing images, you're doing basically whatever the, the drive will respond to through either the API through Windows or whatever, whatever problem it has, you may still have while you're doing DD or trying to deal with physical images, doing even FTK and things like that. Very few of the pieces of software do anything with control of timing. And typically when you're looking at, at problems on drives, once you get outside something like 600 millisecond response times, you may actually be able to read the sectors, but Windows isn't going to respond to it, and several of the other uh, file systems and operating systems aren't going to respond to it. So I have a piece of hardware that's called the DeepSpar Disk Imager, which is hardware with software. And uh, so, so basically at this point, I, in the last 30 days, I'm running on beta code. I mean, literally beta code that was released like <laughs> Thursday. So I tested it Friday to make sure that what I had was still up to snuff and was still working. Uh, so I'm going to demo something that I think is really awesome where we're now leaving just this physical image component where we normally deal with sectors. So if you want to know anything about how I repaired the drives or what I've done before I got here, uh, I'm not doing that today. I'm doing now I've actually done head replacements or platter replacements and moved the content. And now I'm actually going to have problems imaging it. A constant problem that you will have, like you're dealing with good drives when you're using DD and you're using FTK Imager. If they have a problem, they typically stop. You get a little thermometer bar, well, not in DD, but you get a little thermometer bar, and then bam, it's dead. If there's a problem, it doesn't continue on, and you've got to figure out what happened or where it left off, or if it can, you know, if it has one bad sector, maybe you'll make it through it. But if you got, you know, two million bad sectors, you're not going to make it through an image, and you're not going to get anything reliable. So that's where I'm starting with. 2 million bad sectors on drives that really are damaged, and I'm going to try to get the data off of those types of sectors. So, uh, so it's normal for me to actually have to do a head replacement or a platter replacement to get a motor running to get the heads actually working again or resolder a board to actually repair it and get it going. But most of the time after I do that, there would be no possible way for me to use a piece of software to make an image. It would die. There, anytime you do a head replacement, you're going to have a little bit of a misalignment no matter what you do. You might not be able to read every single sector. So that's bad news. So this is a special imager that you can think of as a bit turret for a hard drive. 
Basically, it takes a sector and it treats it as a part. And it doesn't matter what order it gets the parts in. It doesn't matter how it gets them. If it read it once, it never has to read it again. After that, it's going to focus on the ones that are problem areas and go back and whittle those down into smaller and smaller pieces in any order that you want to do it in. There's ways to send it forwards, backwards, turn off cache, turn on cache, change ECC, things like that. I'm not going to talk about everything the machine does because it would take about two and a half hours for me just to tell you the breadth of what it does. But they have this new module they just added in the last 30 days where they're taking it from a physical recovery and they're going to logical. And what I mean by this is typically if most of you had a drive that was dead and wouldn't mount or something like that, you might try to use something like Foremost or, or you know, Scalpel or something to go and carve files off of your file system. Right? You guys used to that kind of thing? Like you're going to scan a drive and hope that you're going to be able to read a JPEG by a header and spit it off. But you get a bunch of corrupt files back, right? So what if we could be more surgical? What if we could say, I got a catalog and this MFT is the most valuable thing on a Windows formatted drive. So MFTs, we're talking NTFS. So I'm expecting that you at least know we're talking about a Windows drive only at this point. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something called MFT file-based imaging. So, so kind of my disclaimer is, um, this is beta. I bought a bunch of hardware in the last 24 hours and I just came and plugged it in. So I have no backup here. I have no, if something blows up, there's no extra hard drives. There's no extra laptop. And I'm going to push it pretty hard in an hour to get this done. So, uh, so crap can happen. And I'm running on beta code. So just so you know, I can do it. I've tested it. I've done data recoveries with it already in the last 30 days. But if smoke comes out, that's the way it goes. All right, so, so this is kind of my whole point that I was trying to make. Normally, you're used to doing a sequential, traditional-based imaging method where you've got to read a drive from beginning to end, and usually you have to do it in one pass. You have to get it done, or it's not complete, and you can't do anything with it. And so this is where we're going to kind of get away from that because trying to carve files just doesn't work for the most part. You're going to lose stuff. Even the MFT itself contains files in it. So... Basically, this is what we're looking at. Uh, if you have done carving or you did not get a complete copy of your drive and you try to carve stuff off, these are the kind of things you're missing. You're missing, first thing, you're going to lose a lot of time. This piece of hardware can actually control power, and it can also decide to turn off the hard drive when there's a failure, turn it back on, and restart from another location. So it can actually turn the power off and do things. So it's basically the way to automate this process so I can go home. Uh, Small files that exist in the MFT, you would lose. You'd lose fragmented files. Fragmented files are our biggest nightmare. If you have a big database and you're trying to recover it or a video, it's dead. You can't recover the whole thing. It's not going to work. So uh, then you also have sparse files, which are basically kind of compressed files by the operating system. You would lose those. You wouldn't be able to actually recover them completely. There would be empty space that's not separated correctly. And the biggest problem we have as if you've got media damage, you've got head damage on a drive, and it basically whacked the platter, that there will be a spot that is damaged. And if you keep grinding on that sector like some of the other software does to try to read the sectors, it'll actually start digging the head into that location on the platter doing more damage. So my whole goal would be to skip that. What if I don't need those files? What if I don't need that piece? Since our traditional thing has been to image the drive from beginning to end, well, what if we decided... I've got an MFT, which is a database on my computer, and this database says what my files are. It will tell me where my files are and what they are in my directory structure. So if I could choose what I want, I can be surgical in removing the files that I care about. So let me give you kind of an example. If I had a 60 gig hard drive, I've got to copy 117 million sectors in order to have a complete recovery. But what if the documents and the documents and settings folder for my user was only two million sectors? Then I could do two million sectors instead of doing 117 million. So I can cut that way down. So this is what I'm looking at here. Most of you who have done any kind of software or data recovery or used a piece of software that's looked at forensic software, you have basically these metadata files that are on your computer on a NTFS drive. And the ones that are important, basically, for me, is going to be primarily going to be this one here called $MFT. And uh, so Microsoft likes to begin all of their metadata files with dollars, and it's because Microsoft likes dollars. But um, <clears throat> outside of that, uh, th these are the things that we care about. Now, this is just basically telling you what these files are. And the one thing I want you to note is that the master file table basically c contains a 1K record for every basic file.